Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Good job. Awesome. Hey guys, welcome to the living room. Look who's in our living room. It just got brighter and more beautiful. <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, our brand new friend, really new friend, Juliana yes. Zobrist is on the podcast. And I'm a massive fan, and I'm sure you are too, but if you don't know all the things she does, you're about to like fall majorly in love, like I did. So check this out. You need this in your life. We're going to talk. Oh We're going to yes. talk all about it. <laughs> I love all the colors thank- on the front. Like, it's Oh, just thank you. The outfit. I decided to cover myself in tutu, up to my neck. You know, my publisher wanted yeah. to be more sleek, like the back cover, to be the cover. And I was like, anyone can wear a tight pink dress I think not anyone but yes. right, right off the bat <laughs> what? You know, like, I wanted it to be wild and crazy we're talking yes. about courage like yeah let's oh, go that's ahead a good and point. show that we need to be courageous and courage comes from cur. I'm gonna go French Canadian for a minute mm-hmm. from your heart yes it does so your Very heart nice. was like my Showing heart the was Canadian roots exploded there, on the outside and you yes. know it's good when your children see it. it and they go mom I I don't know about that you know and I'm like it's perfect then like, I'm taking the right risk <laughs> yes. this is amazing I'm embarrassing you great no. perfect <laughs> we're, we're still at the stage with our kids that the song ends and they're just in the back seat yeah <laughs> we can do no wrong just yet that's I true that. we play them all of our demos good bad and ugly because they will clap for yes, us they will. at the end <laughs> so I've marked this up like crazy um and so we're gonna get into this because it's, I read it in, I, I was going to say one of my favorite books of 2019, but it came out in 18. It did, yeah. And we met in 18. And um, so my favorite book of 2018, you got to get it. Pull it off. It's Thank so you. good. And um, I met you on Instagram because I just kept bumping into your page and into you and feeling like I was getting to know you, which doesn't always happen on an Instagram feed, mm-hmm. but you had found this way to be like, here's me and like sharing yourself in bold color and I was like I need to know this woman (laughs) and I kept talking to Chris about you but I knew nothing about you I didn't I am I saying your last name right so yes okay good um and so I said your name to Chris he's like well what just wait there's like I'm a big fan of the Cubs like I know oh you are we haven't even talked about this well yeah I mean of course you know she (laughs) says your name and like oh that's interesting that I think I I know someone with that last name. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, really? I'm like, because I'm just like all about you, all about you. And so I look you up and I'm like, oh, you are? In th-. I'm like, babe. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Which I say all the time in 15 years of marriage. Babe. <laughs> You're right. Sorry. Yeah, you're, so, you're right. Yeah, we grew up in Canada, so like by default, we were like Blue Jays fans because yeah, they're the only course. Canadian team. Of course. Yeah. Um, but it was so fun, like <laughs> kind of getting swept up in this cultural cultural phenomenon of the Cubs being in the World Series again. Yes. And like watching Bill Murray crying on TV and, <laughs> you know and it was just like this great thing and I had watched the World Series the year before too mm-hmm. with Ben being with the Royals. Right. Juliana's like, married to Ben who plays for the Cubs second base? Yes, second base. Yeah. Yes. And We're not going to talk baseball the whole time but I know no, no, we, 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 we have good <laughs> friends okay. here that are massive Cubbies fans so it was just yeah, like huge. it was oh, so fun awesome. you know being on being on that train with Yes. Yeah. yeah, it was wild. And I'm guessing you're a fan of Ben, so I'm sure you're okay that we brought this up right <laughs> way. Yes, he is part of my life. <laughs> yeah, this is a big part of your life. Um, you sang, I just wanted to go here for a second, but did you do you sing him out to the field? I do. And you yeah. did that for the World Series. I Your did, Your song. Yes. You wrote the song. I did. Well, no, no, no. I didn't write the song. Okay. Oh, Elton no, right. John wrote the song. <laughs> My Canadians are, yes, I wrote are the all song. coming out. <laughs> You're like, so no, that's a song all Americans <laughs> sing. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> So he used to walk out to my song, Alive, and yeah. then um, in 2015, I believe it was, he was. people started calling him Benny the Jet. Mm. Um, oh, nice. And so Elton John's song, Benny and the Jets, mm-hmm. Ben was like, you should recover that. So I had Amazing. to, because it was, a derivative, it was a derivative work because I wanted to add in Go Cubs Go into it. That's awesome. So we had to get Elton's permission. <gasps> He had to literally, he's somewhere on his throne, like getting a foot massage, listening to my version of Benny and the Jets. And his wow. publisher was like, this is not, probably not going to happen. And he approved it. And so I just feel like, That's what? A great way so to send indebted. a demo. 
I that, know. I, so, that's um, what I'm going to do from now on. Just send it on to Ellen. Just, just what wow. do you think? Give me your... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Come on. That's a good story. Yeah, yeah it's a good story. That's in, so, Elton, um, we went to New York City... Uh, we've been a couple times, but we're never there for more than like 24 hours, mm-hmm. I feel like. And so we had a list of restaurants. So we walked all of Manhattan this one trip, ended up at this happy hour spot. I don't even remember what it's called. And we were there I literally an hour. Like we had a drink. It was tiny, mm-hmm. tiny. And I'm facing Chris and in walks Elton John and I can't see because I'm facing the restaurant. He's mm-hmm. facing the door. Elton John walks in and I just see Chris like <laughs> go like this. Well, some like, conversation sort of becomes like. <laughs> and I'm like, who walked in? He's like, Elton John. He's by, he just touched your shoulder. He's walking. By. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> what are the chances that in this 45 minutes in Manhattan we bumped into Elton John? And so we felt really great because we're like, we're, we must be at like the tastemaker spot because we like, were here before Elton John. Oh here. yeah, look at you, <laughs> So we both have an Elton story. I knew we had a lot in common, but I this did just too. went. This I just know, went over the top. Well, over Milo's the top. favorite song is Elton's song from Sing. That Johnny, oh, yeah, Johnny the Gorilla sings. Yeah. He great. thinks it's Johnny's so song, great. but <laughs> I played him Elton's version. He's like, I want Johnny. <laughs> yeah. well, okay, I think okay. we're gonna end this episode with your version because I haven't actually heard that. I've listened mm. to like mostly just your original Good stuff. Idea. Oh yeah. But I'm gonna cool. have to go check that out cool. too. Thank you. And we can so, do we can do whatever we want because it's our podcast. So if we want some music, right. we're gonna play music. That's right. That's right. So um, I got to know you thinking of you as an author and then I was like wait she has music so then I find your music but you also speak Mm -hmm. I feel like you're also a model if you're not like you're a model to me I don't know if you also like professionally have done that and you're a mom and you're a wife yeah. You do a lot of I sound, things. I feel exhausted right now. You just <laughs> but you look really awake. Oh, so thank talk you. to me about <laughs> highlighter. How <laughs> you do this? No, I'm. It's a real legitimate question because no, I know a lot of moms um, want to do a lot mm-hmm. of things that are in their heart to do, and sometimes it's just hard to know how to get up and get going. Mm-hmm. Um, so how do you get up and get going and do all? these things. (laughs) That's a big question. It is, but I mean, the short answer for me is that I see creativity in general, like my Mm. self-expression, which I've always been so um, married to and bound to, Mm -hmm. I see them all as basically one giant muscle. So when you're, Mm. when Mm. I'm doing fashion or when I'm writing or when I'm singing or when I'm trying my hand at art, you know, that that's all a different part of the same muscle. So... Mm. Self-expression to me is basically just the external representation of who you are mm. internally. Yeah. And I just have this extreme passion mm. for knowing all of those cracks and crevices and parts of myself and all of the hidden places that yeah. are creative because I do think that that's really where our genius is and that's yeah. where mm. we get to see the face of God in one another mm. Mm. is in these, um, mm. these very original and authentic moments. Wow. That is so good. I mean, that's just a great self-expression. That's the best definition. And it comes out in all of your things. So I get that. Thank you. Like, it's all connected. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why it feels effortless when I'm watching you on social media, although you're really honest about the fact that it's not. Mm -hmm. It feels effortless because it's all coming from that same place. Well, anybody that has... Thank you. Yeah. And you know this, having children... um, (laughs) <laughs> that it does take effort, you know? It does, And, yep. and yep. so <laughs> I think one of the most inspiring things that I can hear back, if, if you've read my book or if you've come and heard me speak or something, this one woman um, wrote me an email probably two weeks after, and she said, I was an art major all through mm-hmm. college. I have five babies now. Mm-hmm. I've totally lost touch with my creative self. Wow. And she said, yep. I decided that every nap time, I was going to turn off the TV mm-hmm. and I was going to put down Facebook and I was going to put down social media and I was going to pick up a paintbrush. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like that's such a huge win. Like it's such a, it's yeah. a small step, mm-hmm. but it's such a huge win in that woman's life because it's investment so back in yourself. It's investment yeah. back in just your pure essence of who God made you to be. So has this always been something you've been able to thrive in, like living in that self-expression so confidently? Because when you have little babies, so you have three-year-olds. How old are all your kids? You have three kids. Three, seven, and ten. That's a lot. I know. 
wow, <laughs> not there yet. I'm not there yet. Um, three is our oldest, but mm-hmm. anyway, have you always felt like you could operate so well in your self-expression or was there a time when babies were little and you're juggling houses wherever your husband's playing and then you're moving to Nashville and you're between cities mm-hmm. and you're packing suitcases? Like, was there a time where you found it hard to express yourself honestly? Um, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And there definitely wasn't confidence behind it. Mm. It felt more like um, survival technique, mm. basically. Like I would yeah. travel yep, in there. with our my um, 88 key MIDI keyboard and hmm. we'd shove it in the middle of our Malibu and we got like a baby in the backseat and a suitcase in the other and we're traveling across <laughs> the country. And it was, it was just this, um, hmm. this need to hold on to hmm. myself and, and my art and to be able to show my children that it is possible hmm. to be able to do that. But um, for that to be authentic is what is so difficult sometimes yeah. because it really is so much easier, especially when you are balancing so much in your life to go, yeah. okay, well, here's the pre, pre-approved pre stamp right? that I know I can get away with that. Yeah. I know I can make music like that. That's kind of safe. I know I can say that on social media and everything will, you know, it'll just be mm. like a free path. But what is it truly that's coming from you internally Mm. and what is really the message that's burning in your heart and Mm. that that's where the most courage is found and that's been the hardest thing for me yeah yeah it's really nice to be approved and applauded like sometimes that's that's all we know how to do is like you're right here's the box and if I sort of and not that that's that's a, some real good things can come out of boundaries. Yes. So I want to be really careful mm-hmm. I say that because we're within CCM Music here, mm-hmm. which in Canada, we were independent and we didn't really have to follow any sort of rules. There weren't a lot of boundaries. We played clubs, we played churches, we were all over the place. And through doing that, we really found ourselves. But now we're within a little bit more of a clear way of serving. Mm-hmm. Um, and it hasn't been bad. It's actually been wonderful to find expression within that. Mm-hmm. And for me, like I'm a pretty free spirited girl, but I do find that as soon as I put a bit of boundary on my time, for me, creativity really comes from that. Yes. So do you have boundaries and habits that help you be creative or are you somebody who doesn't really need any of that? Like it's just kind of always coming out of you. No, I definitely need it. You do? Yeah, I definitely do. I, I've said to my husband a million times, I think that I could run the world if only given four hours a day, but like give me an yes, entire girl. 24 hours alone yes. by myself. I don't know what to do with it. I'm like losing my mind. That's and the best. totally unproductive. So yeah. get it. So get <laughs> it. Give me like yeah. 30 minutes and it's done, you know? <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm sure everyone's agreeing with that. Yes. But yeah, bound, you know, I'm glad that you you kind of distinguish between the difference between healthy boundary mm. and then a, a box. Yeah, you're right. Because it's different. they're different. Like a, different. a box that's needing to be approved, a box that kind of hmm. is fear-based versus a box hmm. or a boundary of liberation or of hmm. healthy boundary is so totally different. Yes. And so right. much of my, um, you know, in writing the book, the question that I would get all the time was, well, how do you pull it off? You know, how do you pull off, you look like you got dressed in a Crayola box. Like, how do you pull it off? Or, <laughs> or the kid it. thing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I started asking, well, who's telling you that you can't? Mm. And nine times out of ten, um, and this was just in part of my research for it, was um, the answer was like, I don't really know. Hmm. I don't know who's telling me I can't pull it off. It's not culture. It's not hmm. religion. It's not my work. It's not Mm. my husband. It's not my kids. It's Mm. seriously just myself. So, so many of those unhealthy fear-based bound or Mm. boxes that we put around ourselves are really, um, are really more of, um, an insecurity than they are a Mm. healthy boundary. But until you name that and notice Mm -hmm. that and the root of it, Mm -hmm. you can't really overcome it. Right. Which is really neat about your book because I love that you came from such a positive place and going, this is personal mm-hmm. for me, but maybe I can help not just women, everybody get to the root of why they're believing a lie that they can't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. So um, you're singing. Did you start with singing? Was that where a lot of this the expression think, came from? Yeah, I was actually, okay. I wrote poetry my whole life. I can tell from following and you. And then, oh, yes, thanks. Totally. <clears throat> I was like the weird kid like honest to god super weird one of six in my backyard would always climb a tree and sit Mm. there and like sing my heart to Mm. nature i was an i would have considered myself a naturalist until i was in 
college, I saw Hmm. God's hand in his nature Hmm. and in his creation. Um, So poetry and writing music was always my way of connecting with Hmm. God and 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 myself. Yeah, it felt like the safe place to me. Yeah, and then um, started Hmm. singing. I actually sang classical music for about fifteen years. Wow, was trained classically. Amazing. I got in trouble one too many times for moving around too much. (laughs) I wanted to stand by the piano. I can't stand by the piano. I can't just. Stand here. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided to go to Belmont University to study music there. Okay. And that's what brought you to Nashville. Yes. Because you are not a Nashvillean. You didn't, you were not born here. I was not. You were no. born in Florida. I was born in Florida, raised okay. in Iowa. You've been all around. Yeah. I mean, kind of. That's kind of, yeah. You're like, well, Florida and Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> How, so, but Iowa, I, we've been there a lot. Yes, we <laughs> Over have. Over the last couple of years. There's an arty side to Iowa. There's places in Iowa that feel arty. Yeah. Definitely. Did you enjoy growing up there or was it more of a, I want to not live here forever? How did um, that go? It was more of an, I don't want to live here for forever kind of thing for me, but, <laughs> but that wasn't because of Iowa necessarily. That was just because of my own desire to experience and move and yeah. go to new places. And yeah. my curiosity just drove me. Yeah. Every summer I would leave Iowa just mm. to go and work somewhere. It's always been in you. Yes. So I'm sure you're raising your kids to be like, okay, I love you. I want you around all the time, <laughs> but I'm also raising you to be able to chase down that fire inside yes. you too. How, like, do you think about that a lot? The craziness of motherhood, how you're, they're like, your, they're not your everything, but they've come from you through you mm-hmm. and you're raising them and you love them. But one day you're raising them to go Yeah. and get to do what you've gotten to do. Yeah. How do you feel about that? It's so exciting to me. That's good. It truly is. That's why I've got to try and see it. That's a good answer. Well, I mean, it's terrifying in a way, Mm -hmm. but I really don't hold, like, I just, I don't hold responsibility for what, Mm. for God's work in their life. I hold responsibility for educating them, for, um, you know, bringing Mm. culture to them, for explaining things to them, for being a safe ear for them. Yeah. Um. But God will do his work in yeah. them, and he will take them yeah. where they want to go. I've, I've said to them so many times that I just consider them like a treasure chest. Hmm. And, like, yeah, there's some gross stuff in there. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what that is, too. But, like, yeah. then there's the real treasure. And, mm. like, we get to adorn them with that. We get mm. to say, this is who you are, and this mm. is what you hold, and this is um, what mm. God has made you to be, like, in and of wow. yourself like this is so intrinsic I didn't give this to you I didn't teach you this like you're right. just that way you know yes like so I told true. my daughter I'll often go around and give them like one word to this to describe them and um, mm, I love it's that it's so important for me at least to say like Zion his word was winsome hmm. I said Zion you and I explained to him where hmm. the word comes from and, and all of the ways that it um, what it, it kind of implies in a personality and then to follow it up with but God made you that way hmm. like that's his that's hmm. who he is and he's just fractioning himself out into hmm. your heart and he does that to me in a different way and to you hmm. and you so wow it's I love that I usually have all these like smart aleck comments when we do podcasts yeah. it's like I'm just kind of like so he so it no. <laughs> <laughs> I like no, smart <laughs> Go It'll ahead. come. It'll come. Your no. It'll come. <laughs> so you move here by yourself yes. to go to Belmont. Yes. And your family is in Iowa. Yes. And you're studying what exact like obviously music and voice yes. at Belmont. Music and voice and business. And business. Mm-hmm. That's great. Look yeah. at you. And yeah. you're doing this. And so where do you meet Ben? How does how does he come into your life? We met when I was a junior in high school. Wow. So we were friends for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. I was pretty uninterested in dating or men or marriage for that matter. Mm. Um, I didn't really see that in my future. Yeah. But God has a way of just being like, actually, <laughs> so here you go. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, like, so yes, we, we, were, we met when we were young um, and then started mm. dating when I was in college. Wow. High school sweethearts, or was it not realized in high school? No, for he you? was in college, and oh, I was in high school. Got so he's like you. a creepy dude that wants the high school girls. Number. No, I'm kidding. I'm yeah. just kidding. Like, I'm ben. kidding. No, he was friends with my sister. My you guys sister like that? Okay. He's like, come on, man, yeah. give me a break. Like, I'm doing my best here, but you're in college. Like, I can't compete with that. 
Well, well you, I said yeah. no to all of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're five years older than me. People would never know because baby face, handsome husband over here. But makeup. I mean, <laughs> whatever. Do you have makeup on right now? A no, little bit. I, I patted oh, his I, nose. He oh, makes yeah. me pat his nose. Oh, okay. Well, I would I would watch it back because I, I edit it all too, and it's like he does wow, it all. It's so shiny. <laughs> this is brutal. That's so good. <laughs> so obviously, as you overcome fear and put on confidence, you're growing, and your husband is on his own path. Like it's this interesting thing, right? We we meet young. Like we met. Well, I was 23. Very. No, I was 21, probably. You were, you were, no, you were 19. I was 19. When we first met, you were That's 19. right. I'm th- we got married when I was 22. Yes. He's the organized, detailed <laughs> one. Yeah, I'm like, win. woo! <laughs> um, but, which sounds really young. Um, but you're, you are. You're just kind of realizing who you are mm-hmm. and always realizing who you are. Mm-hmm. And if you value growing mm-hmm. and you just crave that, which is why I think getting to know the Lord is just so adventurous and amazing and it's the mystery of him that keeps unfolding and kind of drawing me to him Mm -hmm. that's really why that's what I was drawn to when I was little I'd sing and I would just feel overcome by this mystery and like Mm -hmm. drawn to it and I really felt like the most myself and the most known and understood and confident Mm -hmm. when I sang Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't have been able to say any of those things I just made everyone listen to me sing yeah I'm still doing that you know but I kept chasing it down thing. I love mm. your voice thanks I do. Mm. well I I do too yes yeah, thanks guys <laughs> it's so good thanks no that's really sweet but I when people ask me that too like the same sort of thing you're asked like how do you do all the things how do you get out and confidently do it it, that's the answer mm-hmm. like I, I've just never stopped chasing down that mystery <laughs> and letting it unfold me and right. and just get to know the Lord and the Holy Spirit's voice, um, but then you're also married, and so you're you're on a journey together, mm-hmm. but you're also on your separate journeys. Right. So, I guess I'm trying to find the question, and I'm just watching you guys, and you're both really like amazingly going for it in life. You both have careers, you're both parents, and you're married. Like, how does that intersect? Like, do you go through growth spurts, and you're like? come on, babe. Or does he, like, are you both always growing? And like, (laughs) I don't know. I would say we're probably pretty typical when it comes to kinds of things. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know the answer to that. Yeah. It's just, for me, it's just, I am like you in that I am obsessed with the unknown and am Hmm. constantly asking questions. And Hmm. I find, I find so much um, comfort in the gray and all of the off-white and is he the same way uh he's different than i am yeah 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 that's okay i mean yeah i think that we're all made differently for a reason totally that's what it is that's what Mm -hmm. i'm trying to get at because i randomly posted valentine's day i i can think for a long time when i post because i i really care about what i'm putting out into the world and i can take a really long time to think about it before i put it up but I got my hair cut and the kids were in the back seat kind of losing their minds and we're potty training and Rilo's been doing awesome, but pooping on the potty has been challenging. So he had to poop and it was just craziness, <laughs> but I wanted to post a Valentine's yes. post because I love you so much and I love talking about love. So I just kind of went, you know, um, unity is not uniformity. I'm so glad we're so different. Mm-hmm. And I just, boom, like I just put it up and then today I came back to it and I was like, that was not that romantic, but why did I feel... I felt great about it anyways, yeah. posting it. Because yes. I feel like that's what I love about us is the strength he brings and the strength I bring and the differences between us that make us stronger together. Yeah. And I feel like when I look at you two, even though I don't follow Ben, but I just feel like you're both better for each other, that you're so different. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I love what you said, unity, mm. not uniformity. I say that all the time. Mm. Um, and that's so important. In mm-hmm. any context, especially in the church body, I think yeah. right now is oh, this, uh, mm. if we can release one another from hmm. uh, this requirement of uniformity, which is very yeah. cultural, yeah. you know, and in that way, um, it is a box and I mm. think an unhealthy one, um, not necessarily a, a healthy boundary because mm. uh, you can walk around the world and, you know, I'll talk to my kids about what's going on globally or the church mm. in, uh, from a global standpoint and... Um, hmm. It all looks very different 
you know, and Christianity looks very different and they dress different and they mm. sing different and they, yeah. you know, they um, yeah. hmm. live life and parent different and their love relationships look different. And um, hmm. just to understand that, that God does not require hmm. this uniformity from one another in the body of Christ. Hmm. Um, our unity comes from our love from one another. You know, hmm. he doesn't say, and they will know you by your ability to homeschool your children right or like birth a child this particular way they yeah. will know you by your love for one another right. so mm. when we can just champion each other mm. and um adorn each other with the way that, that we see ourselves as being different and reflecting god yeah like how cool would that be mm-hmm. hmm. there's a lot of freedom in the fact that that is what god said yeah like i, I the older that i get the more i realize how much freedom and color there is and I thought it was like this but it's like that it's like yes eyes arms wide open yeah you know what I mean he's like go for it and not just freedom but like this ability Hmm. then when you really own who you are as an individual or the the role that you play Hmm. as Juliana as Jody like what role do you play in the body of Christ and Hmm. um to really take ownership of that and then allow the hand to be the hand and then allow the eyeball to be the eyeball instead of Hmm. being like I mean, the yeah. ankle is the place to be. You know, like she, <laughs> see the way that she does Christianity? Like, she's so super holy. Mm. This is what we do. And we, like, you're supposed to be a neck, but you're trying to be an ankle. And it just doesn't <laughs> work. And you can't move. And, like, yeah. what happens when, like, your kidney decides it just wants to be a small intestine? Like, it just doesn't go <laughs> Major well. Major problems. Right? <laughs> Major, Major problems. problems. But we mm. have this way of... Um, hmm. I call it the spiritual hierarchy where we like elevate Mm. certain um, personalities and certain gifts that God has given Mm. and we don't function as the body. Mm. We literally can't move Mm -hmm. when we behave like that. Mm. Um, That would be a great sermon. Just, yeah. just go through it's right all here. Like, yeah. It is. And I, you know what? When I go and when I get to speak on this, I actually literally get down on the ground and mm. twist my body the way that we do and talk mm. about like, I would do it for you on the table, but your viewership <laughs> might <Yes. mind. laughs> We need to live stream yes. your next, your next experience, the Juliana experience. Oh my and gosh. Live stream it. <laughs> No, I love that. What does that look like when you book a gig? I'm guessing it's not just singing and it's not just speaking. It's all it's all the things that are you. Yeah. What does it look like? It's different. Um, sometimes it is only speaking. Sometimes mm. it is only music. Yeah. My personal favorite is when the two get to collide. Mm. And so it's a pretty interactive show. I sing at the beginning and mm. then I speak for about 45 in the middle and then I sing at the end and That's all awesome. of the music. Everything's very cohesive. So everything goes mm. together. And there's slides and videos and um, Hmm. interaction. Yeah, interaction. I love that. Do you have a show in Nashville coming up that I can go to? Yes, you. I do. You do? I do. Tell and I, everybody. I can't, I can't release the date yet. No. But it's going to be Can you say where so it is? Fun. No, you can't say no, any. No, I can't. Oh, okay. I can't, but the whole the whole thing is about to be released. So it's going to be amazing. We're just going to get all of our people together. Well, when you okay. know it, tell us and then we'll, we'll mention it on the podcast too. Thank you. Yeah, maybe if you are allowed before this comes out, we'll let all y'all... I'm so bad at saying that. No, Y'all. but that's really exciting. Yeah, we're in Nashville. I know. I try. Like, it's fun to say it, but it doesn't. Everyone's always like, "Where are you from?" When I say it, <laughs> did you say that growing up in Florida? I did. Y'all? I did. Yeah, oh, not because of Florida per se, but my mom is from Dallas, so she's a very, oh. she's a Southern mm. belle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's get into fashion again because I'm just okay. See you guys. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you're wearing no, pink. You look great, babe. I well, Come I mean, anyone? I, I read, knife? Do you have a knife around your neck? Yeah, it's my secret weapon. Like, just this is how case. I open CDs. And how does TSA feel about this? For the five this? people who oh. buy CDs. Oh no, I. This I, is deep I, in I put the carry-on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Didn't you get one? You did wear the first one that I gave you, and it got confiscated in it did. Sweden. Mm-hmm. In Sweden? Didn't it? Oh, no, that was a different knife. Oh. That was... You carry many that knives? Was, that was a total brain <laughs> That's the one he wears around part. his ankle. Oh, my God. <laughs> Babe, all the things I thought I knew you. I know. Said, because you're Canadian, we're not going to arrest you, but if you had been from a different country, we probably... You'd be in jail crazy? right now for carrying really? that knife. Really? Yeah. It's like... It was the tiniest ow. little... It was a pocket, Oops. a tiny Sorry. pocket knife, which you should still not carry, but... Anyway. Yeah, you don't mess around with weapons in Scandinavia. No, that's true. No. Okay, so back to fashion, though. Yes, and I wore this because you had mentioned that you wanted your wedding dress to be pink, so I was like, yes. 
Thank you. <laughs> Babe. Thank you for that. I love that. And it that. was Valentine's Day yesterday. Yes, so. it was. Yeah, um, what was your wedding dress like? You did not wear pink. I did not wear pink. Mm. Do it you was, wish, like, would can you do, like, an anniversary and... That probably needs to happen. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that probably needs to happen. But, yeah, I mean, pink with champagne and yeah. carrot cake, but there's something mm. about that peer pressure that, you know... Do you deal with it? Yeah. <clears throat> Heck yeah, girl, girl, I'm alive and breathing. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it makes me feel it's better. It's everywhere. It is everywhere. It is everywhere. Like, do yeah. you post and then sometimes go like, should I have posted that? I used to a lot. You're I over used it. To a lot. I'm kind of over it. There will mm. be times though that you know people will get like to that mm. part of you that mm. just feels insecure, and they mm-hmm. they push it, and you're like, ah, oh, uh, there it is. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But. um Hmm. Yeah, I did want to wear a pink wedding dress, but I thought people might not think I was pure, so I didn't. And then mm. I wanted to have champagne, but then people might think mm. that you're an alcoholic, so you don't. And then, and then oh, your yeah, wedding you want to have things. carrot cake, but people yes. might be allergic to carrot cake, so you just, you know. So if you're trying it, to please all the people. It's just not going to work. It's no. just not going to work, because there will always be somebody Girl. that has an opinion about something, or that will disagree disagree with you about something, and that is the beauty of having a brain that mm. we can be educated and smart mm-hmm. individuals and we can know hmm. what we think and why but we need to be mindful mm-hmm. that you also have a brain yeah and you've also done your research and you also know why you think what you think hmm. hopefully and yes and, some you know, days some on your good days, my good days. <laughs> on my good days I do. um mm. but just you know releasing one another from hmm. i call them the shoulds the shoulds are everywhere you should or should not I loved, look like that. I love that chapter. <laughs> I loved it. You should or should not wear that. You should or should not parent you, like you that. You need to turn that into a children's book. Just a oh whole book on that. The shoulds. Yeah. I yeah I should. <laughs> but the phrase that um, I use with my girlfriends is "Don't should on mm. me." S H O U L D. I have to spell it out because otherwise. It sounds really fun if you say it really fast, but yeah. right. it can be misunderstood. Right. <laughs> but yeah, they're everywhere about what we should or shouldn't do, and yeah. I fell into that, yep. and even on my wedding day, that I shouldn't wear a pink dress. Mm. And um, when you realize that shoulds are just basically um, highly individualized opinions mm. or preferences, mm. usually based on the way that you were brought up or your culture, um, mm. and they're not addressed in the Word of God, like hmm. we just gotta stop shooting on each other. It's not cute. Like we cover each other and Girl. each other should. All of a sudden we're like neck deep in it, you know. Mm. And like you should on yourself, so and then true. you should on me, you, and then you I happen should on to myself. have a t-shirt with that. I do. I, do have. I want to wear that. <laughs> yes. I hope that's play. part of your merch line. Seriously. It actually, yeah, it is. It oh, is. that's good. That was a whole chapter where I was like, meh, meh, meh. yeah, because you're right that we can do that to each other, mm-hmm. and that's harsh. But we do it, sometimes we just don't take ownership of what we're thinking and saying. Mm -hmm. And your book made me think of that a lot. Just how many times do I say this and not stop and go, oh man, that's not life-giving at all. To me or to my friends. Mm -hmm. Like, especially amongst women, like you really want to be letting each other be fully expressed in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, So your wedding would be different if you did it now. I'm sure you still loved it, but it would be different. It would be different, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. you would go, I want this and I'm going to do this. I would release myself of all of the shoulds and just yeah. know that I'm intended and loved by God and mm-hmm. accepted, not because I wear a white dress. but You talk about that, that your authority comes from God, mm-hmm. which gives you the confidence to really yeah. pull it off and be yourself. Yeah. So is that the kind of lens? Is that when you're getting stuck in the shoulds? Is it like, wait, okay. Like God completely loves me and knows me mm-hmm. and he made me and intended me. I'm going to get, I'm going to get over that. I'm going to like, just be aware that I thought that, but I'm going to move on. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when, when God is the authority of your life, which is mm. not a sexy word right now, I totally understand that. Mm. But when he is, and when you see the Bible as like mm. your roadmap kind mm-hmm. of, yeah. um, which is an analogy that's used a lot, but, um, you're mm. able to kind of filter out yeah. all of the shoulds that people are putting on you. And you're able yeah. to go, okay, wait, no, God doesn't tell me how I'm supposed to have a baby. Right. Like, God doesn't say cesarean is wrong. Right. God doesn't say, like, right. we can get down and dirty on the details, but like, yeah, this is how mm-hmm. crazy it gets. And so, you're so um, right. We just, 
yeah, we just pressure each other into conforming mm. into being what we're comfortable with. Mm. And we shame each other. Mm. Really only in an effort to make ourselves feel better about ourselves and the decisions mm. that we've made. So there's just an immense amount of of freedom and liberation when you go, no, God is the authority in my life. Mm-hmm. And he's already given me everything that I need to know for life and godliness. He tells me that in his word. Yeah. So I'm going to rest on that. I'm going to allow you to do you. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to allow, you know, the way that you're trying to control me or the way that you're trying to shame me into being or becoming or doing something your way. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to allow you to have that weight on me or to hold that power in my life anymore yeah to have that you don't have that authority over me like you're right it is a big word but it really gets to the heart of it yeah you know sometimes when you break down these words to what they really mean Hmm. they're not as they're not as you know dangerous as we think they are like we get it a lot playing in churches well you know Hmm. we we want it to be worshipful you know it doesn't need to be entertaining or like you know that the word entertain means to hold someone's attention, right? Hmm. So in that case, Jesus was the greatest entertainer of all time. Mm-hmm. Right, You know, right. And just and we, we, there's such a, yeah. It, a negative just, stigma to that. Yeah, exactly. That would be the one we get probably the most often is how do you handle, is this still worship? Is it performing? And it's like, why are we separating these things all out? God made me mm-hmm. to perform since I was born. Like yeah. there was a hairbrush in my hand. From right. the moment I could hold it and sing into it. Right. So when someone says that, they are shitting on me. Yeah. Right? They totally are. Yeah. And and, I but think, I didn't know... I don't think everyone really maybe knows that that's happening. Mm-hmm. I know that sounds really silly, but that's what I realized reading this. It's like, wow, here are the 10 ways that's happening in my life mm-hmm. and the 10 ways I'm perpetuating it. Mm-hmm. How yeah. do, We need to back this up and really let it sink in. Yeah. You back know. your shit up. Right. Gotta do Back it. Back your S H O U L D up. You got it. Okay, there's so there's yeah. so much power in educating yourself, mm-hmm. not just about God's word, but about what you truly think mm-hmm. and why. Yeah. And then being able to say this and own it. Yeah. People don't know what to do with that. Yeah. You know, because um, hmm. there is such a desire for me to know how to navigate with you, so that we're good hmm. with each other, and then I know sure. how you want me to be. So then we're all on the same page, right? And it's like. <laughs> We used Mm. to have to function like that back in the primal days for Mm. survival. You know, like we all had to be on the same team. Mm. (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) You know, group survival. But it's not like that anymore. Mm. And um, Hmm. we miss out on opportunity to be educated individuals Mm. because we just take the lazy way out. Mm -hmm. And we miss out on the opportunity to to just champion each other and see that life can be lived very very differently and still honoring yes to god i love that yes and how do you uh, balance performing and worship i perform yeah that's what i'm doing like, like that, that is, that is like this yeah. is my job i actually earn money for this like make sense of that you know yeah. but like yeah. just owning and saying yeah this is what we this is what we do yeah. you know it, there's totally. liberation in that and it allows people have to see it's a it's a great example I love following people on Instagram who are life-giving and doing that because mm-hmm. if we're all the same and we're all just blending in, then it's just, blah, 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 blah. Right. you know, and a lot of people get frustrated with Instagram for, oh, it makes me feel so judged. I hear that mm. a lot, you know, and it's like, well, if it's making you feel judged, if somebody on Instagram is making you feel judged, maybe that's a really good thing to stop and think about what is happening there internally yeah. for you. And if you need to unfollow for a second, go for it. But it's probably right. an internal battle of maybe mm-hmm. someone shitting on you, but also you shitting on yourself and trying yeah. to figure out what's happening there. But I love Instagram for the fact that I can follow and be inspired by somebody who's really finding a way to just live life confidently and not mm-hmm. in fear. Like I need those examples on yeah. my feed, right? And yeah. I think you do that. For a ton of people, you're also, you talk about um, flirting with your husband. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. It's, I mean, it's going to come out just after Valentine's Day. But, I mean, I think that I'm a good flirt with you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that thing. But, <laughs> I can totally see uh, it. But I love the reminder. How mm-hmm. long have you guys been married? 13 years. So, yeah, I feel like for a lot of, I, I just felt like that was a really 
tactical, if I can say that word, reminder just to go. Because it can be so easy working together for mm-hmm. us. Um, it actually changed my whole night when you... <laughs> no, I won't go, go too far into those <laughs> details. <laughs> but when I read that chapter, I, it really was great because sometimes um, we can just, from working together and owning a business together, got caught up in the details of that mm-hmm. and not other details. And um, it was just really good for me to go... I'm going to speak, like, I'm going to stop and go. There's a game, there was a Viking, he's a big, huge Vikings football fan. And I was like, I'm going to sit on the couch and talk Vikings and just be in your world and for and just put a stop in my head to all the things that want to take me <laughs> yeah. elsewhere. Yeah. I'm going to just flirt and we're just going to hang out. And so I'm grateful for that chapter. I, it helps me to not curse as much when you sit beside me. <laughs> Glad I'm such Does a good it? helper. Yeah. Well, me and my it dad. Doesn't well, work for me. Me and my dad will always text each other, like, and it's like just not very safe for. <laughs> it's not safe and fun for the whole family. Oh yeah, it's like miss a field goal. It's like. <sighs> <laughs> what is? What's your favorite flirt date night? Like, what is you and your hubby's like? What's your jam? Where would you go to eat? Would you eat in or out? Oh man. Would you dress up? Would you dress down? Like. I love going out. Yeah. That is like, if I could go out and dance every single night, mm. I would do it. Oh, man. Does he like, like to dance? I mean, it's not really his scene. Like, he'll do yeah. it, but it's more I like, like to, this. I like to watch he, you like, dance. He, like, surrounds me with his arms. That's great. Like, yeah. He's like my bodyguard <laughs> so that I have enough space. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I love that's it. what I would do every night, yeah. I love going out. I have been, do you have good sweatpants that feel like you feel great in, too, or, like, yoga wear, or are you always kind of dressed up, even at home? I'm kind of an all or nothing girl, okay. so I'm either like totally dressed, face and makeup, mm. or I'm like braless, sweatpants, yeah. mm. hair up. Sorry <laughs> about that visual, but no, you're making me wonder what I am because I'm in I'm in a season of definitely I feel like having the babies. I feel like pushing out babies. Oh man, is liberating. You're just like if I can do that, I can do. I have no fear about these things. Yeah. <laughs> like, I hadn't chopped my hair. I had long hair, mm-hmm. no bangs, most of my life. And all of a sudden, after the babies, it was subconscious. But mm-hmm. I, because I'm kind of an in the moment person. Yeah. Um, not aware always of even how I completely feel. And all of a sudden, I was in the hairdresser's chair going, Kitty, you just do something. And all of a sudden, I had this. And before, I think it's I was. So cute. Thanks. But I was kind of yeah. scared. My hair had yeah. kind of become me. Yeah. It was like safe for mm-hmm. me. I felt like it could kind of like hide some zits or things or like my big <laughs> nose that now I'm like, yeah, I do. You don't misunderstand this profile. And I'm being serious. Like I'm not making mm-hmm. a joke about it. It was really, there were things for me. Yeah. Um, being on stage, being insecure in those things. I felt like my hair was my way of sort of hiding a little bit. Mm-hmm. So cutting it was actually like after I did it, I didn't know any of these things in the hairdresser's chair. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to look like, um, what's her name in Ocean's Eleven with the great Kate Blanchett. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. She, all the things, her fashion and like all yes. the leopard prints. and You I was totally like, do. Thanks. <laughs> You're completely Kate Blanchett right now. You are. <laughs> That's all I knew I wanted, but my heart, and now that I've sat back a couple months and gone, oh, it was a whole thing. Like, cut, cutting the hair was a whole thing of getting rid of fear and putting on confidence yes. in an actual physical way. Yes. You know? But That's anyway. Amazing. So your book has helped me. Oh, I well, I love that. I, mm. I feel honored. Thank you. I mean, yeah. I think the most important thing, not the most important thing, but one of the things when we're talking about confidence or being courageous is mm-hmm. really reframing the way that we look at fear. Mm. Um, there's a huge message right now of fearlessness like be mm. fearless you do you go mm. be fearless and it's mm. like well what the crap like but what I does have that feet. even mean right because i wake yeah. up with fear and i yeah i walk into mm. a really cool coffee shop and i feel insecure or i you know go to meet somebody new or i'm parent teacher conference and all of the other moms and i feel i feel mm. this this pull of insecure mm-hmm. uh, insecurity yeah and so One of the main things that Mm. I wanted to do in the book is say, okay, we got to stop looking at insecurity as something Mm. to beat, as something to rid ourselves of. Mm. Because if you do that, you're going to become only a master of avoidance, only a master of maintaining your same hair because there is insecurity behind cutting it, right? Mm. So what we do is when we feel insecure, to consider that an opportunity, Mm. to consider that as like this light bulb going off in your head saying there's Mm. something there 
yeah. that you're afraid of. Yeah. And that fear is your opportunity for courage. Hmm. And even down to like on a biological brain level, this is exactly what's happening. Your amygdala fires and then all of a sudden hmm. your SGACC goes, are we going to be courageous or are we not? Hmm. And the amazing thing about how the brain works and the way that God has made us is that the more often that we look at our insecurity or our fear mm. in the face and we say, this is who you are and this is why you're there, or maybe we don't even know why, mm. but this is who you are, this is what you look like, this is what you smell like, I can see it from a million miles away, <laughs> and then we actually mm. move through it, yeah. We it, it not only releases itself of the power that mm. it's had, but your brain literally lights up with courage. Your mm. brain goes, okay, I'm tapping in right mm. here. And the more that we can do that, the stronger it becomes it hmm. literally acts more like a muscle than it does an organ it is so freaking fascinating to me wow. and i'm like why are we saying to be fearless we're we're cutting all of ourselves hmm. short hmm. by that message we're actually making our brains extraordinarily lazy hmm. but if we can say insecurity is that springboard hmm. to exercising our courage well hmm. then you can get stronger and stronger and stronger hmm. isn't that awesome that's incredible. That's such a that's such a good tool and I feel like it's like anything the more that you do choose to be courageous, the more you get better at it. It's just you're yeah. right. It's a muscle. It's like working out every morning. Yeah, it's like I'm not going to try and do the splits right here right now. It would just I mean, not go well for me <laughs> or for any of you. <laughs> like, <laughs> so you don't just become courageous. You right. work at it and you exercise it and your mm. brain gets more and more used to this feeling of insecurity that it then overcomes. Mm. Wow. We've been um, hmm. talking That's a lot good. about the Enneagram, Enneagram, however yes. you pronounce hmm. it. And I feel like that's kind of a great uh, way of describing how, you hmm. know, these different numbers and all the things that, yeah, all the different qualities of each number, like it's, it's not so much, you know, I, I found out I was a nine because I read about, you know, nines <laughs> when they find out they have a lot to do, they want to take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, hey, that's that's so good. <laughs> but the point of it is not to be like, oh, I recognize that's who I am. So I'm just going to like, yeah, that, that's who I am. That's just what right. happens. But oh, well. More like, oh, that is who I am. How can I take that and, you know, either overcome it or, you know, use it to become mm. a better person. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like that's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Step by step, not just by going... I'm fearless. I'm going to be fearless today. That, yeah. And that's impo it's an impossibility. It really is. Yeah, the like now that you brought is, that up. is kind of like a flag that's being like, I need to run with that. Right, yeah. exactly. Well, it's, we talk about that on stage a lot. I sounded very Canadian. We talk about that a lot <laughs> on stage. I like but that. But <laughs> the very, the very, about, yeah, after I talk to my mom on the phone, I'm very Canadian. <laughs> I get off, I'm like, oh, wow. But I love it. It's where I'm from. Um, but yeah, we talk about that on stage a lot because I think with a song, the very first song people knew of Love and the Outcome was a song called He Is With Us. And it's a very strong statement. It's a very, mm, they must be so grounded and so, mm. so faith driven and never doubting. And I was, I really had to debunk that for people. It was like, so we lived in our Jetta for two years. We sold, sold all we owned, not because we were so sure of ourselves, because we had no money to put into my first record mm. and everything went wrong. We kind of lost all the things. And in the middle of asking the question, are you with us? Mm. We wrote that song. Wow. So I relate to what you're saying in that for that promise to be a promise for me, I had to walk through the, it not being true for me yet. Right. And the question marks of it all to get to a place of going, oh, I can sing this with confidence. Mm -hmm. um, and now there's an authority um, that God has given me to sing this and go, this isn't just a song. This is a song I've lived and walked. And this is a promise I've had to really test out. Yeah. To come to a place on the other end of going, everything didn't work out perfect, but the depth of relationship and foundation I have found in the Lord <laughs> through really asking that question yeah. has helped me really own this to go, yeah, I really can tell you for me, it's true that, that he is with me and he is with you, but I can't, I can't just say you're fearless or he's with you. You have to kind of go now mm -hmm. and wrestle that through. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you have done a lot of that to be able to write a book from a place of God is my authority. And I am able, mm -hmm. even though I still wake up with fear, I've sort of walked through that happening a lot and gone, okay, what do I do? Mm 
Right. And the book comes from such an honest and exciting place, not a place of you still, I'm sure you're processing it every day, but it doesn't feel yeah. like you're in the middle of it. It felt like you've kind of learned some ways to do that. Yeah. It's just a few of my tools. These are, it's, it's like, like your tool belt. You <laughs> and I feel like, I mean, we could talk forever and I want to talk forever. Maybe we still can off camera, <laughs> but I also know that you have lots of things and children and many, are, are you writing another book? Actually, I just should ask you that. I um, have written a devotional mm. that's going to be coming out. It's geared um, a little bit younger, and yeah. there are 71 devotionals, which mm. my publisher was like, could we do like 70? It's God's perfect number, like 7-7, seven, seven, or anything other seven, than 71. Seven, seven. I said, listen, I do not want 30, 365, right. Monday through <laughs> Sunday. I don't want any reason for people to feel mm. burdened when they pick this up. Yeah. I don't sure. want them to feel guilty about missing mm. Tuesday or missing this day of the week or whatever, you know, this day of the month. Mm. So it's 71 and it's very simple and awesome. it's meant to be like ripped apart and X'd out and highlighted and mm. put on your mirror. And Great. Um, I love yeah. that. Yeah. It's great. Uh, okay. Watch for that, guys. So much more to come. You are so much fun to hang out with. Oh, so are you. Can you, can you before we go, can you tell us about your tattoo? Oh, oh my yeah. Just, yes, at least the one that we can see. Yes, it, yeah. this is the only one I have. Mm. This is my first and only. Can the camera see it? Hello. Oh, yeah. Can you guys so, see this it? is Plato from the School mm. of Athens. Mm -hmm. And um, my favorite word is the German word, Zinzucht, which means longing. Mm. And um, yes, mm. so I love philosophy. Mm. I've read almost every work of Plato. And, mm. and the School of Athens is this really beautiful representation of a conversation that's happening even now. Mm. I talk about it briefly in the book, but mm -hmm. it's one of the pieces of research, being an art lover, mm. that so radically changed my worldview mm. and my view of God in general. Mm. And that was that um, you know Plato is in the middle of the fresco with Aristotle. And they're kind of, and they're surrounded by all of the chief thinkers of the time. It's like astronomers and mm. mathematicians and poets and writers. And um, they mm. are dialoguing about whether or not we're made in the image of God mm. and whether or not you're <laughs> given an imprint of God. Mm. So Plato has his hand up because he believed that we are given an inherent value and worth because we had to be created by something. And I mean, this is 430 years before mm. Christ. Mm. Right. And Aristotle's pointing down to the ground because he says, no, 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 we're just dust. We're just mm. flesh and bone. And um, you have to gain access to God by knowledge and reason. Mm. And so I believe, like with every fiber of my being, that mm. we're each created in the image of God, whether or not you ever know that, mm. that we each hold this innate intrinsic value and worth because mm. he has seen fit to bring mm. you to life. I can't think of a better way. <laughs> to end the podcast in that. That gave that me like amazing. goosebumps all over my body. That's that's beautiful. Thank I can't you. wait for people to get to know you more. Thank um, you. Through hopefully this and your devotional of 71 encouraging reads. Yes. I, I can't wait. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We Thank love you, you all so much. Um, the way you sign off every post is, can you, can you tell us? You say you're intended. You're loved. Yeah. Yes. I say I you are intended and you are worthwhile and you mm. are loved and just put that on repeat. There you go. Love you guys. Love you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>